All right, so this is going to be a quick and dirty tutorial on how to make a highway overpass and integrate it into your terrain. And the cool thing about this technique is that everything's going to sew together and be very nice, okay? Um, and we're not going to have a ton of excess vertices or um, faces, etc., from not using this technique. So we're going to start with a 512 by 512 by 64 height brush, right? Drop down to the 64 grid and press enter. And I like the ground to be right below the blue line horizon. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to make two more copies going this way. Make sure I got my no draw on so we can see. There we go. Now, I'm actually going to make a copy of this ground. We're going to go, um, we're going to go 256 above, which is approximately right there. And now <clears throat> we need to actually do our rotations. We're going to do negative 45 down here. I'm going to hold alt click and drag that brush so that the vertices are approximately on where it needs to be. Shift, click, drag, control M, another 45 degrees. It, it fits cleanly right here. So this is our closest approximation. Shift, click, drag, control M. Rotate again, holding Alt, click and drag and get it about as close as it needs to be. Okay, again, Shift, click, drag, Control M, 45. There we go, that's a good point. Do another one. I'm just gonna keep doing this all the way around. Yeah, another one right here. Now actually, um, you see how this doesn't line up with this part up here. So this is what we're gonna do. I'd rather it align with this. And I'm just going to shift this up so that we can maintain the integrity of this angle, as you can see, because a road has, roads have a pretty specific um, criteria. They need to be a certain width, right? So we want to maintain the integrity of that angle. And I think that's going to be approximately right here. I'm going to go ahead and drag to meet with that. Okay. Now. We need to make all of these vertices match. So we're going to start from our origin over here. Go to the vertex tool. First thing we're going to do is going to grab both of our interior angles. Click drag and then enter. So now I have both these sides selected and we're going to snap into place because remember earlier we were kind of in floating point land and we were just approximating where that angle was. So now that we have that snapped into place, I'm just going to grab that top one and we're going to attempt to maintain the integrity of the angle, right? Like I talked about earlier. So I'm on the eight grid and my real eyes are gonna be somewhere in this realm, but my mouse cursor is gonna be clicking and dragging this out, right? So that we can meet on this same plane right here. So I'm holding Alt on my keyboard, click, drag, and I'm gonna just attempt to maintain the integrity of that angle. And that's gonna be approximately right there. I actually like it more if it was right there. Um, now we're going to click, drag, and meet right there, and we're going to do the same thing with the top one because there's a top and bottom part to that. Now we're going to click, drag both of those, and we're going to meet right there in the middle, and now we're going to do the same thing with this side. We're going to hold Alt, click, drag, and we're just going to go out, and I'm not being very precise about this like I may have said earlier. You can be as precise as you want to in your measurements. Uh, part of displacing is it's the art of being imperfect, right? Um, displacements in this regard are not meant to be <clears throat> mathematically correct the whole time. Um, a lot of this is approximation and meeting in the middle to get a nice result. So now we have this angle right here. Hold Alt, click, drag. We're going to drag, 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 drag. And that's our approximation right there. We're snapping into place right there in meeting right there, okay? And same thing here, I think I already did this, I'm just double checking, okay? The bottom angle, click, hold, drag, we're dragging, I'm not being precise, and that's gonna be approximately right there. Okay, I'm gonna grab that, move over here. I'm gonna go ahead and save, because if I don't, hammer's gonna crash on me again. I'm gonna have to redo this tutorial again. I don't wanna do that, so there we go. I'm gonna save it as temp 12. And continuing off, we're going to go ahead and grab this one now. 
grab both those bottom angles, snap into place, grab both those top angles, and we're going to snap these into place. Um, luckily for us, that stays on, it's a perfect 45, so that was really easy to do. <clears throat> now, grabbing just the bottom vertice, hold Alt, click, and drag, and we're going to drag, 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 until we're approximately where we need to be, about right there. I'm going to fix it, fix that additionally. And now we're going to do this point. Click, drag, 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 drag. About right there. It's a good approximation. And like I said, you can be as precise as you want to be in your work. Okay, so now we have a hole. Now the one thing that we need to double check before we fill the hole is that we need to have an even number of interior sides right here. So we're only going to count the interior sides. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we looked out, we have an even amount of sides. <clears throat> per the chance that we had an odd number of sides, we would need to make an additional cut somewhere so that we could add a face, right? And get an even number because displacements can only be quads. We cannot have a three-sided displacement. So at any point that we encounter a three-sided hole, we would have to do, you know, some additional adjustments. Like I said, we looked out this time, it's an even number. So now we're just gonna fill in the middle, right? I'm just gonna shift and drag another copy of this out. And we're just gonna meet vertices, right? We're just gonna meet vertices, just like this. Okay, shift, drag, another copy. We're gonna put that bad boy right there. And we're just gonna meet over here. Attempt to make all of these approximately the same size. It doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes you kind of have to have a wonky shape displacement to fit the hole. And sometimes that's just how it is. So that's gonna be that's gonna be our best bet right there. Okay. So now save again. Now to see what we're doing, we need to actually, we need to pick our road texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in road. And we've got these nice left for dead textures. I'm gonna pick the SS bump because SS bump looks nice. Rotate 90, change our texture scale. We can do 0.5 by 0.5. Hello, keep going off there. There we go. And do bottom left, alt right click, click, alt right click. Okay, now we need to do the bottom part. So um, the easiest way to do that, alt right click below. And we're gonna click on that interior face, alt right click, alt right click, alt right click. And we're gonna do that all the way around so all these meet up. Alt right click, alt right click. All the way around. Now we won't need that one anymore. Okay, <clears throat> so now let's pick a, let's pick a nice um, a nice dirt grass blend for this. Let's do this. There we go. Okay, now we need to pick a trim for our bridge here. So I'm just going to type in trim. And I think this one looks good. Again, change the texture scale. I'm going to do 0.5 by 0.5. Don't uh, move the cursor too far off like I keep doing repeatedly because then it's going to deselect that. Okay, bottom left, alt right click, alt right click, do the other side, alt right click, alt right click, alt right click. And we're gonna leave these interior faces here um, blank because that's gonna be road is gonna um, join right there. Okay, now we haven't actually made a displacement yet. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the texture tool or the, the face edit she I lovingly call the texture tool. Hold down control and we're gonna left click on all the faces that we want to be a displacement. And we're gonna avoid clicking on the whole brush and making the whole brush a displacement, okay? That's a, that's a, that's a big no-no, we don't wanna do that. And for our bridge, we do want our sides in the bottom, right? We still need to texture the bottom there, so we're gonna pick a texture for that here more momentarily. Okay, we have all the faces I want to be a displacement, we're gonna to go to create. Okay, there we go. No power of four, don't use power of four. We can talk about that later. Make your multiplayer maps, uh, make the game server hang, so we don't wanna do that. Concrete ceiling, I think that'll be a good pick. There we go, that's a good pick. All right, now, 
Control S, we saved, we're all up to date. Okay, so now we're going to, I'm in solid mode, I'm gonna go back to group mode. We're gonna select everything, hold control, I'm gonna ungroup our bridge there, and we're gonna group that. So now this is one big group. So anytime we work with our displacements, we wanna work with all of them at the same time, except for a few case scenarios, okay? Um, for cleanliness sake. Now, this bridge, like I said at the very beginning of the video, this is 256 above the origin, okay? So I'm selecting the main ground, going to the texture tool, displacement, paint geometry. I'm gonna set our distance to 10, and then we're gonna do like a radius of, well, maybe 1024. 1024 is a little big, so maybe not 1024. Let's do 10, let's sir, 2048 was too big. We're gonna do 1024. Let's, uh, let's try to get it as close as we can to the bridge, but without intersecting, okay? So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go up. And we're just approximating this about as high as we can go, right? Without clipping, right? Good approximation. Yeah, right there. I think I think that's the money right there. And then we're going to give this side some love. I'm just going around and basically trying to um, get a more smooth gradient to um, our slope, right? And we're gonna do some smoothing here in just a second. So now we're gonna go to smoothing, set my distance to one, change my radius to something uh, smaller than that. I think about right there is good. So we're gonna smooth some of this out because this, this road is um, basically undrivable at this point. Cars would be sliding off the road because the angle is too um, steep on the sides. Roads are very specific, right? Um, roads have to be a certain, there has to be uh, a certain gradient. There, the slope can't be too sharp. Um, the angle of the road uh, as it goes around can't be too sharp or cars can't traverse it. So um, roads are very specific. Meanwhile, terrain is a little bit more, or the ground is a little bit more free form. I still think of the road as terrain in this situation. And we're just gonna do a little bit more smoothing. There we go. I think we're getting really close. And that, I think that's our, I think that's our ticket right there. I think that this road is, um, I think you can drive on this road now and there's not going to be mass cataclysm or wrecks, right? I think that's about right. So now the most important part, we need to adjoin this, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to do raise to 256. I'm going to set my radius to something small like 128 and we're going to meet right here. And that ground's gonna clip, but that's okay, because we're gonna fix that here in a second. We're gonna meet every single point, okay? Now, let's get a smooth one. And let's see, let's change that to about 256. And we're gonna try that one more time. There we go, I think that's about right. Now, we're gonna go back to raise two, 256 again. So our radius down to one. And we're going to meet these points right here, just these points. There we go. So we're perfectly aligned with that bridge. Okay. In fact, oh, we're off slightly. 256. Make sure. See, very specific. You can be off by one unit and it will be wrong in this situation. We have to be very precise. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we don't care about these displacement faces right here because they're not really that important. They're really just for the bridge, right, in that situation. So we don't really care what's happening in here. Um, <clears throat> you could call that mashed potatoes displacement work if you want to, um, but I don't, I don't think it is. I think this is very clean, good looking work. Now, now that we've done that, um, I want some grass because I don't want all this to be dirt. So we're gonna get a paint alpha, raise five, value 32. I'm gonna turn off grid there so we can see a little bit better. And we're just gonna paint some grass in. 
maybe I don't want grass directly touching the road because um, inner city grass may not be growing quite as plentiful. Um, I think that's good. And historically, I've seen overpasses. It seems like this part is usually some kind of concrete or cement. So I'm going to pick a cement texture and put that right there. I think that that looks um, acceptable. Now, the next part, I'm going to go ahead and group that group that together. We're going to group everything together, actually. Ungroup and group. Now, let's say I want to do a copy of this. So I'm just going to shift drag that, do a 180. And now we need to meet this stuff in the middle. Let me go to a big fat grid to make it easy to align. And we're actually going to go in one. And then we're going to delete the extra copy that we have here in the middle. Get a solid mode over here. Delete, delete. There we go. So now everything should be good. Now, we're going to go back to group mode and select everything, ungroup, regroup, and then we're going to sew. There we go. And our work is done. Uh, aside from, actually, a couple of other things, now that I think about it. Let's give the bridge a slight... Let's give it a slight raise in the middle. I think it will make it look visually more interesting. We might do, like, something like 10, right... Oh, I have these inverted. Sorry about that. Do something like that. So right there in the middle, I'm going to turn my grid back on so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to click. Now, you never click and hold with displacement orc, and maybe I haven't said this the whole time. You only want to click, right? If you click and hold, you're going to cause mass cataclysm. Okay, so we're just going to click once in the middle. Boom. And just like that, we have that very, very slight gradient. I can do Control z and Control y to kind of show you. In fact, I really don't even, I think that was probably the wrong tool that I just used. We're going to try that one more time. Yeah, I did raise two instead of raise lower. So make sure you're on raise lower. There we go. That's the money. That's what we wanted. That's it. Make sure you're on raise lower. Now, our roads are looking kind of octagonal, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, octagon, right? I'm just going to select the road in this situation. It's the only thing I want right now is just the road. I'm only selecting the road faces, okay? And then we're going to go to displacement. We're going to go to subdivide. There we go. That just rounded out our corners a little bit and make things look nice. Now, remember earlier when I said I wasn't being very precise about my work? If you're being more precise, then we can account for um, kind of uh, distortions like these that happen when we're in floating point land and not being super precise. So you could be more precise with your work and that would look improved compared to what we're doing right now. Now, the next thing, typically I like to subdivide our terrain too. Um, not going to do the cement piece. We're going to leave that the way that it is. Do subdivide. Okay. Now we're going to select all those pieces. Or actually, we're going to select everything. And we're going to re-sew right there. Okay. Because that, that concrete that concrete base right underneath the underpass is going to be our home base. So we don't want to distort that necessarily. Again, we're going to subdivide right here. Select everything. Re-sew. Okay. Now we're just going to go back and we're going to look over our work and make sure that everything looks the way that it's supposed to and we don't have any weird um, vertices going on. And then at that point, our map is basically done. And that's it. Now compile it and go drive around in it and have some fun.